Hello everyone, it's Donna with Miniature Barbie Builds. My next video, this video, I wanna show you how to make this retro dining room table chair. Isn't it cute? And it's made out of recycled products. You can make it out of anything you have handy at home. And I used the blue fabric here and I have stuffing in the seat and in the backing and the stem is actually from a wine glass a plastic wine glass you can get them at the dollar tree two for a dollar 25 at the moment but that's what today's project is i'll show you how to build this you can purchase these already completed at my barbie doll shop on etsy if you don't see something that you want send me a message and i will try and build it for you in the colors that you desire okay first things first i found these in a box of an item that we purchased off of Amazon, I believe. And that's gonna be the base for the chair. The first thing we need is a pattern. And this will be, the. I wanna cover the bottom of the chair first. So, first thing is to get your fabric. Now you want it to be a little bigger than your pattern but not a whole lot bigger, or you're gonna have a lot of excess you're gonna cut off. I actually usually cut off a lot of excess because I'd rather be safe than sorry. So, and I don't want it on that crease. So, let me find another spot. So, about that much space around the pattern. And then some of that even you will be cutting off in the end. I also use this for my stuffing. It's just an old scarf. And cut off what I need. Actually, this is the bottom of the chair. It doesn't need stuffing. Sorry, I was thinking I was doing the seat. So disregard that for now. Okay, when you do corners like this, you need to do cuts. So the fabric will go over those corners easier. Sharpen my scissors. My goodness, is that dull? And I usually fold it one one corner at a time. I don't want a lot of excess fabric on the back side, so I am going to cut off extras off the back side. And to spread the glue around, instead of a paintbrush or something like that, I usually use toothpicks. It seems to work better. I don't have a bunch of ruined paint brushes laying around.
الأب I usually try and do the opposite sides so that it doesn't pull excessively on one and suddenly get to the other side and you don't have enough fabric. And then I'll use these little clamps to help hold them in place. And this I hold until the glue dries. And usually while that's work going on, I'll start some another one. And I'm gonna start the cushion. And do the very same thing. All I gotta do is cover the You want to make sure you cut off a little extra fabric for the top because you're adding a cushion to this. Don't worry about the excessive padding material coming out over the sides. Because as you finish it up, we'll take care of that. Don't have to wait for the glue to dry too long before it sets. This one's probably already ready. Okay, as you go around these angles, that's when you want to watch how you're sh shaping your fabric to go around these edges. Keep looking over at the front side, see how it's shaping. You want to be able to pull it tight. You don't want any excess. And then cut off what you don't need to, to reduce the bulk. You want to make sure you don't cut off too much. You end up having to you end up wasting the fabric. Have to take it off and start over. Which, if you pay attention to the video, I did at the start. I did tear off what I started and start over. Okay.
put that aside. You get this one. I'm going to stop the video, guys. This will just be boring watching it. But I'm going to finish these two seat pads. And then I'll show you the finished product. And we'll pick it up after that. Okay, I'm back. I've finished the two parts. This is the padded seat. This is the bottom. The bottom side of it doesn't really matter how it looks because it's going to be hidden. Okay, you take this. The first thing... I did add a piece of fabric on the bottom of here to help hide the black plastic until the last step where we cover the back and it'll hide it. So first thing you want to do is apply glue on the bottom of your plastic and attach your base. Now you want to do this at the same time, attach both of them at the same time because you want to, you want to make them both um, equal. You don't want the front jutting out further than the back, vice versa. You want them both even at the lips. I'll show you what I mean. So you spray glue on the bottom. And you want to attach the top before it dries so you have time to manipulate it. And you apply glue at the, on the top piece. And remember, the glue does stain the fabric, so do your best not to get it on your fabric. Okay, and then you push that in there. Now, while that's in there, see how that's not even? You just kind of a s fix it so it's even. And it'll look like that. And then you'll take your things, clamp your clamps, and clamp them down. These things are no fun to mess with. Very stiff. I'm actually going to move that a little bit further. And once again, it's a waiting game. You wait for it to dry. And what you could do while you wait for that to dry is get another piece of fatting, stuffing. And this will be for here. And you can go ahead and glue that on if you got enough clamps. Remember the glue, try not to get it on the seat. It's amazing how much glue you use. Clamp that down. And you wait. All 
Okay, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and take these off now. It's probably only been about five minutes, but it's long enough. You can tell. All right. Now this, my particular batting is two layers, so I'm going to have to add more glue on the inside and then stick the, the next layer down. Yours may not come that way. It just depends on what you use as batting, for batting, rather. And this stuff sheds everywhere. Once again, you clamp. Wait a few minutes. She's shaping up. And the next step for the chair is to cut out another piece of fabric. This will be the front side. And I don't need that. I'm going to cut this fold off. I don't need it. Try and have your fabric wrinkle free. It looks a whole lot better. And also make sure you've got the the right side up for the outside of your project. There is a good side and a bad side. Okay. This, we're going to start... When you do, when you glue this in, you want to make sure you get the fabric down beneath the the seat cushion. That'll hide the edge of your fabric. See how I've got it pushed in? It needs to be that way after you glue it too. So we're gonna add some glue. I'm actually gonna put it on the fabric because it's easier for me to apply. And I'm just gonna do the bottom of the fabric for now. But it's easier to apply to the fabric than it is to the batting. Remember what I said about the glue? I do not wanna get that on my fabric. Just work it in there. We've got a few minutes before the glue attaches itself. And if you need to, you can use a, a ink pen, toothpick, if you can't push it in there on your own. And be sure you add that crease in there or your fabric will be too tight. There we go. Now, I'm going to let that sit. I can't add my clamps here, so I've got to just let it sit here and dry. So we'll let that dry for a few minutes, and then we'll come back. And I'll, I'm, I'm actually, actually probably just do this off the camera, but the next step is just to glue it around this to cut the fabric as I go. You want a little bit on the back side. See how that far that extends on the back side? It doesn't need that much. See, this really extends. So it's kind of cut around the edge as you go. But like I said, leave enough to cover and to be able to glue it on the back side here. Okay, let me let this dry before I do something to it. And I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I've been gluing the back down. I hope you have a lot of clams because 
I like a lot of clams. It seems to work better that way. But just choose whatever you've got. Now the top ones here, the glue is still fresh on that, so I'm going to leave those alone. But as you can see, we have a lot of excess fabric on the back. I'm going to cut a lot of that off. Because if you don't, you're, when you attach your backing, it'll be kind of blobby. Okay, I still need some glue. It's still not all the way down. Let it dry a little longer. Then when I come back, I'll go ahead and cut the excess off of here, and then we'll be ready to attach the backing, attach the binding around the edges to hide the seam allowances. We do it in the back, front, along here, and the back. Then we'll be ready for the legs. I'm actually going to make all four of them. So I'm going to make the other three after this one to make a set of four before I attach the legs because it requires me to go out in the garage and cut the top part of the glass off. And I'll do that later. I don't feel like doing it now. But. Okay. At least we can sit here with us. Okay. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, everybody. I'm back. Got the back attached. The next stage is to cut a piece of the fabric. And the fabric I've been using is a dinner napkin. I had a set of four. And you notice it's got this seam on the bottom of it. You want that seam to go along the bottom of your chair. You want it to go in this seam line right here and cover that up. You want to start on one side. Let that dry before you start on the other side, or at least let it set for a few minutes before you start on the other side. So we'll go ahead and glue that down, and I will show you when I finish how it looks. Also, I wanted to show you when you do when you do this, you want to leave a little bit of excess here on the on the edge. And you can work with that later as you're applying the other, the rest of the binding around the edge. And also, don't worry about gluing the entire thing down yet. You're, you're just concentrating on the bottom here. You want it to, you want to attach the bottom first. Don't worry about anything else. See how nice that looks already? And it hides all those all that, all of that, it hides it. It looks great. All right, let me get this pinned down and I'll get back with you. Okay, we've got the bottom glued down. It looks really nice. The next step is we need to fold all of this over. And when we do, we want it to be as close to this edge as possible because we're gonna take more of this cordage and put it along that seam and that will hide our, our marks. But before we get started, see how much excess fabric I have? I need to cut that down because we don't want a whole lot folded under. It just doesn't look good. So we cut So, all we do now 
Just fold it down. See how I folded it? Now we just glue it there. You don't have to worry about gluing the back down because as long as you get the edge, it's gonna be okay. And it'll look a whole lot smoother if you don't glue all this down because sometimes glue can leave bumps and stuff like that. And we're just gonna take it slow. We're not gonna take and do a whole bunch at once. We're just gonna take it slow. Pin it down as you get parts of it glued down. Okay, now see how this is folded over up here? It's going to create an uh, excess fabric on the bottom side. So don't be shy about cutting excess fabric off. See how much of it you can cut off without cutting too much off. It'll lay down a whole lot nicer. And make sure it's even with the top half. You don't want to be too high or too low because you want to be able to hide it with that cord that we're going to be attaching as the next step. Gives a more finished look. When you add the cordage. These, these clamps of mine are really tight. Now, before I go on and do this side, I am going to let this dry. So, when I come back, I'll have this side attached also. So, we'll be back in a minute. Hey guys, I'm back. Alright, so as you can see, I've got it all attached. So, that now we're going to add the decorative pieces to hide our seam lines. And like I said, these were napkins I purchased. And I cut the binding that was along the edge, and those are what I'm using to hide the, the seam lines. So the first thing you want to do is put glue on the entire seam line. You want, like everything else, you want to do it one little section at a time and not get ahead of yourself because it takes a while for the glue to dry. So determine how you want to put it on there and you put it right up to the edge. There you go. So I've got it right up to the edge, right here. And I'm gonna take it all the way around that seam line. And it'll look really nice when we're done. You wait a few minutes for it to dry. This area here, it's really hard to get a clamp, but what I do is I'll, I'll push all the way up to right here. See, and that holds it on. And it holds pressure right here. It holds pressure on this. And that's all I need is for it to hold pressure. And while that's being held there, I'll go ahead and glue the front. And I'm going to attach this like that. So I'm going to finish that and then we'll I'll come back on when I get it completed. 
Okay, I'm back. I've got it all done. See how much more smooth that looks? Much more finished and polished. Okay, now we're going to do the same along here. This will be a final step for the chair besides making the legs for it. Okay? And once again, I'm using this cord. I've um, I purchased four. And it looks like I'm going to need three to complete the project. So if you think you can make four chairs with one napkin, you're incorrect. And this is the I used all the binding on this one. I cut it all off except for this little piece here. So, and this was my third one. So you do need at least three napkins. I bought them at Goodwill for 99 cents. But this is the size of them. It's probably 16 by 16 maybe. And that's the size you'll need. And they come in a lot of variety of colors. I've got the blue ones. I've seen green ones. I've seen yellow. I didn't purchase the yellow though. It, I just had a hard time imagining that in the chairs. Maybe you would like the yellow, but I've seen yellow. You can get all these at the Goodwill for 99 cents a piece. And sometimes if you get there, they'll be half off. Like the color red is the color of the day you can get it half price. You can get all four for 50 cents, hypothetically. I've done that on occasion. I've bought items to use in my projects and I, I get them at half price. So don't discount the fabric at Goodwill that comes in the clothing and the sheets. There's a lot of different fabrics out there that you can use for Barbie projects where the fabric pattern is small enough or the correct texture for a Barbie doll. So, okay, let's get back to our project. You wanna start on one end, it doesn't matter which side, but you wanna start at the bottom. Apply your glue, and you wanna apply it along the seam. That's where you want this binding to be. And I'm gonna cut off the end of this because it don't look good. And you want it to meet the binding that you put around the bottom of the chair. I don't know if you can see it. But with a little bit of work, you can get them perfectly matched so they look like they belong together, like that's how it would, like the chair was made. Okay. And you want to look at the back side more than the front side because that's where the seam will be showing and you want to make sure that is covered. This will give your chair a really nice completed look. Very professional. And because these, well, I'll go ahead and finish since I was going to wait for it to dry, but I think he'll be okay. Just go cautiously. There's no hurry. It is just a Barbie doll world. Barbie's never in a hurry. She always takes life one day at a time. Very peaceful, very Calm. There's no reason to be anything but calm. I mean, it is Barbie's world. The 
The hardest part is the top section where you have that curve and you can't put a clamp there so you're going to have to hold it so I'm going to shut the camera off because all you're going to see me do is sit here and hold it for like three or four minutes because I need it to set. I'll see you when I get this all attached and show you what it looks like. Okay. I've got the ribbon all the way around the edges. Now the next part is the fun part. It's the leg. And what I did became came with the top like this and I asked my husband to cut it off and then he flattened the edge and that was it now all I gotta do is glue it attach it to my project you want to make sure this is level because your doll isn't going to sit very good if it isn't level And then position it about midway, like that. And then I use the E600 for this part of the project. I fill the whole top of the item with glue. And then I look at the, what I believe is the center, and then I stick it. And there's nothing else to do but hold it. So, we hold it. And when this step is done, your project is done, and you have a Barbie doll chair. A beautiful dining room chair. I'll come back when I get the whole set done, and I'll show you the table set.